For a case of vertigo or dizziness, ataxia or hearing loss, using our mnemonic old carts as our guide, we'll note the onset, or when did it start? For the location, we need to know if the hearing loss is in the right or the left ear. For the duration in a case of dizziness, we'll ask if the dizziness has been constant or is it more intermittent. If it is intermittent, we like to note the frequency, or how long does an episode of dizziness last for, and how many episodes are you having per day or per week. Next, we can note the progression. Does a dizziness or hearing loss appear to be getting worse? For example, in dizziness, are the episodes occurring more frequently or more severely? To characterize dizziness, we'll need to note, as we'll see below, if it's true vertigo or is it more ataxia. Also, for any case of dizziness, we'll need to clarify the rest of the vestibular system and ask of any hearing loss, tinnitus, or ringing, or falls, that's high yield. Likewise, for any hearing loss, we'll need to clarify the rest of the vestibular system and ask if we have any vertigo, tinnitus, or ringing, or falls. Aggravating and alleviating factors, radiation, treatments tried, and severity on a scale of 1 to 10 if we have any ear pain. And again, if there are no aggravating and alleviating factors or radiation, we'll be sure to state that in our patient note to show that we ask. We'll break down our case of dizziness into true vertigo or dizziness and the sensation of room spinning, or ataxia, more lightheadedness, a sensation of imbalance or falls. For all cases, we'll order a CBC and serum electrolytes. In benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, our supporting points will include vertigo, a duration that's 20 to 30 minutes, and it will be aggravated by standing and alleviated by lying down. We can see nausea and vomiting, and we know by now to use our mnemonic A, B, and C to write down the amount, if there's any blood, and the color, bilious or non-bilious, of the vomitus. And we'll add to our workup a Dix Hall Pike, audiometry or audiogram, tympanometry or tympanogram, and an MRI of the brain. In Meniere's disease, which is due to an increased circulating endolymph, we'll see the vertigo and now hearing loss. The hearing loss, as we see below, of Meniere's disease is a sensorineural hearing loss. We'll have lateralization of the Weber test, as we'll see in our physical exam coming up. We'll also have tinnitus or ringing, oral fullness, and a history of syphilis or head trauma. In labyrinthitis, we'll have the vertigo. Hearing loss, as well, like in Meniere's, is sensorineural, and we'll have a lateralization on the Weber test, as we'll see. Tinnitus, nausea, and vomiting and we'll use A, B, and C, and a history of a recent URI or otitis. And in vestibulitis, we'll have the vertigo, nausea or vomiting, use A, B, C, and a history of a URI or otitis. So as we see, any history of a recent upper respiratory infection is very concerning for labyrinthitis or vestibulitis. On the ataxic side, we'll have orthostatic hypertension, and that can be seen with lightheadedness, and will be aggravated by standing, we could have diarrhea as a cause for the orthostasis, and we know to use our mnemonic A, B, and C. Or we could have as a cause for the orthostasis antihypertension medications. And we'll be given that in the history or in the vital signs if we see a blood pressure that's less than 100. And we'll add here orthostatics or a stool culture in the case of diarrhea. In diabetic peripheral neuropathy, we'll have lightheadedness characteristic of the hypoglycemic episodes, along with sweating and palpitations. We can also have the imbalance, and that will be seen with the characteristic diabetic numbness and tingling. Our patient will have a history of diabetes on insulin, and will add an A1C and serum glucose. In B12 deficiency, we'll have ataxia, fatigue, now dementia as well, and the subacute combined degeneration. B12 will be affecting both the dorsal and the lateral columns. On the dorsal side, we'll have a loss of proprioception and vibration. And on the physical exam, we'll have positive ataxia, positive Romberg. And on the lateral column side, we'll have a hyperreflexia shown on the physical exam with an increased reflexes and a positive Babinski. Our patient will have a history of a vegan diet or weight loss or bowel surgery. And we'll order a serum B12 level and nerve conduction studies. In a transient ischemic attack or a stroke, we'll have ataxia, transient or ongoing sensation, numbness, tingling, or motor weakness, and or speech deficits as well. And our patient will have a history of risk factors, hypertension, diabetes, and smoking. We'll add a CT of the head and an MRI of the brain. In multiple sclerosis, we'll see ataxia, vision loss, 
numbness, tingling. We could have positive intranuclear ophthalmoplegia or impaired adduction of the eyes on our cranial nerve exam and a Laramide sign. And we'll add here a CT of the head, MRI of the brain, and now spine as well. In Parkinson's disease, we'll see ataxia, falls, a resting tremor, which is different from an essential tremor, which is an action tremor. So really this case has four potential differentials and also dementia and stiffness. Our patient will be complaining of stiffness in review of symptoms and also a positive shuffling gait as we'll see in our physical exam. In normal pressure hydrocephalus, we'll have the characteristic mnemonic wet, wobbly, and wacky. We'll have urinary continence, a gait disturbance, this ataxia, and a confusion or memory loss. And finally, in a brain lesion, either cancer or an acoustic neuroma, we'll have ataxia, hearing loss, and the hearing loss of acoustic neuroma, as we see below, is a sensor neural as well. We'll have lateralization on the Weber test, as we'll see in our physical exam. It will be aggravated, like any brain lesion, when lying down or in the morning due to the increase of the CSF pressure and alleviated when standing. We could also have the characteristic features of a cancer, weight loss, decrease in appetite, and night sweats. And we'll order a CT of the head and an MRI of the brain. We'll start our neuro exam with hand sanitizer, and we want to ask our SP if we have permission to examine them. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to start with a hint exam, and we're going to use it as a guide to help us out. So for the head, we could comment that it's normal cephalic, atraumatic. In case of hearing loss or dizziness, we want to uh, do a more involved ear exam. So we'll grab the otoscope. And we want to first verbalize that there's no lesions, there's no ear discharge. And then we could pinch back his ear. We could insert the otoscope and just verbalize that you see a clear tympanic membrane, no lesions. Okay, and if we were doing a case for hearing loss or dizziness, we also want to assess uh, the Weber and the Ryan test. So first we're going to demonstrate a case of sensor neural, neural hearing loss. So the Weber test. And what side do you hear this louder on? On my, on my right. Okay, he hears it louder on his right, so this could be now sensor nor hearing loss on his left. So now to confirm this, we're going to do the Ryan test. We're going to do bone first, so this is bone, and let me know when you stop hearing this. Okay, stopped. Okay. And now yes. do you still hear this? Okay, and what was louder? Yeah. Okay, so now we confirm that this is sensor nor hearing loss of his left ear because his air conduction was louder than his bone conduction. And now this would be a case of conductive hearing loss. So we'll do the Weber test again. What side do you hear this on louder? My left. Okay, so now this could be a case of conductive hearing loss to the left because it's lateralizing to his effective ear, to his effective ear. And we'll confirm this by doing the Ryan test again. So this is bone loss. And let me know when you stop hearing this. Yes. Okay, now do you hear this? Mm -hmm. And what was louder? Um, bone. Okay, since his bone conduction was louder in the Ryan test, now we could confirm that this is a case of conductive hearing loss to his left ear. Okay, now that we concluded his cranial nerve exam and his eye and ear exam, and then we can now transition to the cranial nerve exam. For cranial nerves, uh, cranial nerves uh, one, we don't really assess cranial nerves, so we could kind of use that as a hint or as a placeholder to test their alertness and their awareness. So we could ask them, uh, what is their name? Kalichi. And where are we right now? The clinic. Okay, good. And what time of day is it right now? Afternoon. Good. So now we could see, we could verbalize that they were alert and oriented times three. Okay, now we could transition to the rest of the cranial nerve. So for cranial nerve two, ask them to look straight ahead. And we're just going to check their pupillary constrict, the response. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to do the same thing here. And then we're going to do it on the other side. Good. Now we could verbalize that they were pearl, that pupils were equal and reactive. We're going to transition to cranial nerve 3, 4, and 6. So please, you'll instruct them to please follow your fingers with their eyes, keeping their head straight, and you can see that he's able to follow. Okay. Trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5, and we're going to assess this with sensation. So please uh, close your eyes and let me know if this is equal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So for cranial nerve 7, we're going to go ahead and ask him to please smile, puff out your cheeks. Okay, don't let me pop them. Close your eyes real tight, don't let me open. Cranial nerve eight. And we'll ask him to please close your eyes and let us know what side you hear this. Left. Okay, you hear this louder on your left? Yeah. Okay, good, so that would be a concern now if he has hearing loss on his right hand side. So continue with cranial nerves nine and 10, so you could ask him to say, aha, please. Uh, and we would try to stick out your tongue and we would visualize that we could see a non-deviated uvula. And while he's out here, we could also ask him to do to move his tongue left to right, and we could say that is hypoglossal nerve, 
cranial nerve 12 is intact. And now we will finish up with the cranial nerve 11. So please shrug your shoulders. Okay, so they're equal. And look that way and resist me. Okay, and look this way and resist my movement. Good. We're going to continue with MSRP. So for motor strength, please make a muscle for me. Okay, and resist me. So five out of five, full reflection, and extend five out of five on extension. Great. Now we're going to do sensation to light touch. So please close your eyes and let me know if you feel this equally on both sides. Yes, I do. Okay. Now we're going to do a pinprick. So please let me know if you feel this. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing on your right. His reflexes. So we're going to look at his biceps reflex. We'll place our thumb on his biceps tendon. And this would, uh, his normal reflex would produce a 2 plus response. Okay? And if we were concerned for a case of B12 or hyperreflexia, he would have a 3 plus response. Okay? You would see that. Uh, now we could uh, assess his radial pulses as well. So we could do one at a time at a time if you're more comfortable and we'll verbalize that it's a two plus pulse regular rate and rhythm. After we completed the MSRP for his upper extremity we can now move down to his lower extremity and we could do the same thing. For motor strength on the lower extremities could you please kick out? Okay good so that's five out of five. Now can you please kick in? Good five out of five. Now we'll go into sensation so please close your eyes and let me know if you feel this equally on both sides. Yes I do. Okay great. And now we're going to go into pinprick. So this is a pinprick. I'm going to start on your left side, and please let me know if you feel this all the way down. Yes, I feel it. OK. And now I'm going to go on to your right side. So please let me know if you feel this. Yes, I do. We would also use this uh, time for sensation for B12 deficiency for neuropathy. He may not uh, have good proprioception. So if we ask him if this is the up position, and this is a down position, mm -hmm. where, where are we now? Are we up or down? I don't know. So he may say he doesn't know, and that, that would confirm that he has lost his proprioception for B12. We could instruct him to relax, and we'll do a patella reflex. So a normal patella reflex would be like 2 plus, and then if we were concerned like hyperreflexia or B12, uh, we would get a hyperreflexic response. So just relax, and you'd see something like this. And we can continue to demonstrate with the tap on his Achilles tendon. So we'd start right here. And we would, we would get a normal reflex. And if this was a case of B12 and we were concerned about hyperreflexia, he would give us a dramatic uh, response. Okay, you feel that. We could also test while we're down here of Babinski. So we could start on the bottom of the sole and go into the big toe. And note, if he had a positive Babinski, his toes would curl up. Okay, and then while we're down here also, we would want to assess his pulses. So his posterior tibial pulse will be behind his uh, medial malleoli. We could confirm that it's a two plus pulse regular rate and rhythm. Okay, now that we've finished with the lower extremity, we'll go ahead and hand sanitize again. And we'll ask our SP if they could please stand up and take some steps. So. Okay. Can you turn around, please? I'm sure we're noting. We'll go ahead and listen to the heart sounds. The mnemonic we want to use is apartment M225A. That stands for the aortic. So we'll check that aortic first in the second intercostal space on the right. And then we're going to go to the pulmonic side. Tricuspid. And then we're going to go to the mitral. And if this was a female patient, a tip you could use to slip their breast up. can make a comment that we heard audible S1, S2, no murmurs, rubs, or gallops. Start off listening, we'll switch it over to the bell, and we'll use that to listen above the clavicle. And the instructions you want to give is, when you feel my stethoscope, please breathe in and breathe out.